Hi there. Now in this video what I want to do is extend the work that we've been doing so far on the quadrant rule where I'm going to look at different ranges for our solutions. You can see we've got ranges here going from minus 360 degrees to 0 degrees. Here's a common one, minus 180 degrees to 180 degrees. And in this example, for minus 720 to 720 degrees, this is going to have a lot of solutions. So let's start with the first one here, where we've got to solve tan theta equals root 3. For theta, greater than or equal to minus 360 degrees, but less than 0 degrees. So if we just copy down the question first of all, that we've got then tan of the angle theta equals root 3. And what we've got here is a positive value. I'm often asked why isn't it plus or minus? Well, there's no plus or minus there, we're just taking the positive value. And so if we draw a quadrant diagram, we've got 0 degrees there, not that you have to put that in, but uh, where is tan of an angle positive. Well it's in the first quadrant where all are positive and the third quadrant where tan is positive. So we draw two lines then equally inclined to this horizontal line here. One line here and one line down here. And these two angles mark in then in the usual way as being the same. And for theta if we've got to get negative angles, that means we cannot turn in an anti-clockwise sense. We've got to turn in the negative sense. So one of the solutions, let's label it in red, is going to be a turn from here all the way around to this first blue line here. There's going to be another solution and that's going to be from here turning again in a clockwise sense, which is the negative sense, all the way around till we get to this second blue line there. And I'll label it in green. And these will be the only two solutions in this range here. So to work out what theta is, let's just do the inverse tan to both sides. So theta equals the inverse tan of positive root 3. And assuming your calculator is in degrees mode, the answer you get is that theta equals 60 degrees. Now 60 degrees is not an angle in this range. But it is a possible solution to this equation, just normally. It'd be fine if the range was, say, from 0 to 360 degrees, then we'd take this as a solution. But... What it, it is, is this angle in here, okay? This will be the angle of 60 degrees. And we can use that then to get our solutions for this question. So as for the 60 degrees here, I'll just put it in brackets, it's not required. The required solutions, we'll list them down here then, are going to be that theta equals, and if we take the red one first of all, we know that this angle in here is 60 degrees, so this is going to be a turn of 180 degrees for half a turn, minus the 60 degrees. In other words, a turn of 120 degrees, but it is in the negative sense, so we must have it as minus 120 degrees. So that's one of the solutions there, the red one. Now, for the green one, this is going to be a negative turn. If we were to turn the whole way around, that would be minus 360 degrees. But we've got 60 degrees in here, so it's going to be minus 360 degrees plus another 60. So in other words, minus 300 degrees. All right? So there's our two solutions. Now for the second question here, solve sec theta equals minus 2. For theta between minus 180 and 180 degrees inclusive. And as I said earlier, this is a very common range that you'll find you'll get. I picked this question sec theta as well, purely because it means that we've got to change it into 1 over cosine theta. 1 over cos theta then equals minus 2. And if we rearrange this for cos theta, just multiply both sides by cos theta, 
would have 1 equals minus 2 cos theta and then divide by minus 2 you end up with cos theta equals minus a half. And if I draw a quadrant diagram for this we've got that cosine is negative. And where is cosine negative? Well we know that it's positive in the first quadrant and the fourth quadrant so it must be negative in the second and third quadrants. So draw two lines equally inclined in those quadrants, the second quadrant and the third quadrant, equally inclined to the horizontal here. So mark those two in as the same. And what do we require for theta? Well it's got to be between minus 180 and 180. So starting from here if I turn anti-clockwise we know that's going to be a positive angle and it's going to be a turn of less than 180 degrees. If I was to start from here and turn anti-clockwise all the way around to the second blue line it would be a turn that is more than 180 degrees so it would be out of range. But I can turn from here in a clockwise sense which is a negative turn round to here and this would be in range. But to turn from here all the way round to this one would be out of range. It would be an angle which was less than minus 180 degrees. So these would be the only two solutions. And to get what theta is I just take the inverse cos to both sides. So theta equals the inverse cosine then of minus a half. And if you do this on your calculator, again assuming that you're in degrees mode, then theta turns out to be 120 degrees. And this is an obtuse angle and clearly agrees with this red angle here. So there's one solution. And if that's 120 degrees, then this angle in here must be 60 degrees. This must be also 60 degrees down there. So we've got kind of symmetry here. If I turn 120 degrees that way, the green angle here must be a turn also of 120 degrees, but in the negative sense. So the other solution, the green one for theta, is going to be minus 120 degrees. So theta can be plus or minus 120 degrees. Now for the third question, solve 2 sine theta equals root 3. For this range here, between minus 720 and 720 degrees inclusive. So first of all, what I want to do is divide both sides by 2 to give me sine theta. Sine theta would therefore equal root 3 over 2. And root 3 is a positive value. So really we've got sine theta takes on a positive value. And so that means that if I draw my quadrant diagram where is sine positive? Well that's the first quadrant and the second quadrant. So again draw lines equally inclined to that horizontal line. So mark those two in as being the same size. What angles do we need now in this range? Well, first of all, if I turn anti-clockwise, I'm going to get positive angles. So I can go from here, for instance, and turn to this first blue line. That's clearly less than 720 degrees. I can again start from here, turn anti-clockwise all the way around to this line here, and that too is in the range. But there are other angles that are going to be possible developed from this red one and the green one. Because if I just take the red one first of all and turn to here, if I go a further 360 degrees round, it too will be in this range. Remember 720 degrees is the equivalent of starting from here and turning twice round. So if I go to here and turn another 360 degrees, it's well within range. And the same applies with the screen angle. If I go to there as one solution and then do another 360 degrees, I get a second solution and it will still be in range. So we'll do that in a moment. As for the negative ones, well, 
I could start from here, turn in the negative sense, and I could turn all the way around from here, all the way around onto this first blue line here. And so this will be a solution, call it theta there. There'll also be another one which we'll do in brown in the negative sense. So if I turn clockwise from here, go all the way around till I hit this line here, that too is a possible value for theta. And I can also take this pink one here and go around again. And the same applies to the brown one. I can find that solution and yet go around again another 360 degrees. So let's get those solutions now. We can get those solutions by taking the inverse sine to both sides. So theta equals the inverse sine of root 3 over 2. Now if you use your calculator at this point, Assuming you're in degrees mode, you'll find that uh, the inverse sine of root 3 upon 2 comes out at 60 degrees. And clearly this is an acute angle and it will correspond to this red angle theta here. So I'll just mark that in there. I hope you can see it as 60 degrees. We'll mark it in here as well, 60, because those two angles are the same. So we've got the red angle, theta. 60 degrees and we can move on get the green angle theta that's just going to be 180 minus 60 and that's going to give us 120 degrees so that's the green theta now I did say that we can turn a further 360 degrees round for both the red and the green angle that would still be in the range so if I add 360 degrees to the 60 degrees we've got here, that's going around a complete turn again, that gives us 420 degrees. And because that's associated with the red angle here, I'll just do a dotted red bit there. And for the green one here, we can turn the 120 degrees plus a further 360 degrees. So what that gives us is 480 degrees and I'll mark that in as a dotted green line there. Now you can turn in the negative sense so for this angle here this is going to be a turn of minus 180 minus a further 60 degrees so what we've got then is minus 240 degrees as another possible solution so we'll just underline that one. We can also get another solution when we turn in the negative sense right the way around to here. And that turn is going to be minus 300 degrees. So we've got minus 300 degrees. Underline that one in brown. And we can also turn a further minus 360 degrees from each one of these ones here. If I turn this amount, minus 240, I can carry on turning another minus 360 degrees. That brings us up to minus 600 degrees. And I'll just do that as a dotted line to show that it's related to the other angle. And finally, for the minus 300 degrees, this turn here, I can turn a further minus 360, bringing us up to minus 660 degrees. Minus 660 degrees. Okay, so I hope that's given you some idea then how we can go about solving these equations when we've got different ranges.